Now we're coming up to BBC Radio 2. That's us. Uh, our birthday, our 50th birthday. And, of course, there's been big changes to Radio 2 schedules over the years. At the start, Radio 5 in 1990. Up until then, sport, in fact, was a major part of Radio 2. There were sports reports through the day, things like cricket desk and racing bulletin in the morning, and radio coverage of an event like Wimbledon would be right here on Radio 2. Plus, from 1970, Saturday afternoons were dedicated to sport on two. From the launch of Radio 1 and Radio 2 in 1967 through until 1979, there were shows which were broadcast on both stations. That's uh, Radio 1 and Radio 2 on all frequencies. In the very early years, more than seven hours of Radio 1 shows were heard on Radio 2 during weekdays. Family Choice, The Jimmy Young Show, Midday Spin and The Evening Late Night Extra, which included a presenter called Terry Wogan. I'd forgotten about all that simulcasting, of course. Yeah. They shared the same frequencies, didn't they? The same programme yeah. went out on Radio 1 and 2. And the one that everybody talks about, of course, is after the chart show on a Sunday, mm. where first of all you would hear on the medium wave frequency that uh, noise that I think it was a Russian station used to come through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember Anybody that. remember that? But after the top 20, after yeah. Pick of the Pops. Yeah, after Pick of the Pops. <laughs> and of course, if you were tuned to FM or VHF, on would come... <laughs> sing something simple. <laughs> and Annie would be on Radio 1. And that's when the two stations split. Oh yeah, Annie Nightingale on a Sunday night after the chart that was a fantastic show yeah now our little feature here for the next couple of days is called they did the afternoons because obviously we're doing the afternoons and we thought well who did it before us so many people so many really brilliant people including terry on bbc radio one and radio two the time two minutes past three go on tell Good afternoon to you. From now till five o'clock, you're more than welcome to the Terry Wogan Show. Cantering off on the Wednesday poopy. <laughs> uh, what about Woman's Hour then, Tim? Well, it was originally a programme on the light programme, which of course eventually became Radio 2, but up until 1973, Woman's Hour was broadcast on Radio 2. The vast majority were sleeping outside on the pavements. Under the arches in Charing Cross, I noticed a grey-haired woman huddled in an overcoat and lying on a cardboard box. Beside her were her belongings wrapped neatly in a brown paper parcel. For 26 years, she has had no home. She told me how it happened. And this uh, was a brilliant item on homeless people sleeping rough in London, September 1971. There were uh, several soaps on Radio 2 back in the day, including... Wagoner's Walk, of course, the soap opera which ran from April 1969 until May 1980 on Radio 2. It was on for 15 minutes every weekday afternoon. <laughs> Saturday the 2nd of October, the day of Chris and Tracy's wedding, found number one Wagner's Walk <laughs> bustling with activity. Mum! Mum! Yes, Tony? Where are you? In the living room. Oh, you're busy? I'm just putting a stitch in these gloves. Why? I can't find my grey tie. Isn't it hanging up on the inside of the wardrobe door? Well, if it is, I can't see it. Uh, OK, I'll be up in a moment. <sighs> uh, come in. Come in. Oh, am I early? Oh, hello, Barbara. Oh, hello. Not, really. <laughs> when there no, are no, footsteps, no, yeah. Well. It's a bloke when with a pair of shoes or a woman <laughs> in a box. <laughs> clock at clock. Yes, someone's coming, look. Yeah, uh, David Hamilton. Now, his Radio 1 show was simulcast from 1975 to 1977 here on Radio 2. David Hamilton here announcing that Radio 1 and Radio 2 will soon get their own shows, but not revealing which station he'll be on. And here he is. Shall we play it? Our next news at three o'clock. And now for Radio 1 and 2 listeners, it's over to the David Hamilton Show. Radio 1. Wednesday, 1977. Yes, indeed, it's a Wednesday. It is 1977. How observant we are. It's Wednesday, the 21st of September. Did you hear the news just now? My goodness me. I think they were talking about us. We'll tell you more about that a little bit later on. But right now, let us listen to the sound of the Jacksons getting us off today. And Dreamer. I guess. Oh, brilliant. 
that's brilliant. That's great. I think that was a David Hamilton short shot as well. That's the sound of the Jacksons. Uh, first record the up thing is, like, that was cool. now or today, you sometimes say, it's Tuesday afternoon or whatever, yeah. just in case you don't know what day it is. Then they reminded you what the year yeah, we, was. we never say the year. <laughs> <laughs> Only at the front, you know. I mean, you know, we don't, do we? No. <laughs> By the way, it's 2017. Oh, really? Thank you very much. Uh, what about Glow, then? Yeah, Gloria Hunniford, of course. In 1982, Gloria became the first woman to have her own daily radio show on Radio 2, which she went on to present continuously for 13 years. And here she is interviewing Kate Bush, uh, and there's also a mention of Bill Whelan, who later did the Riverdance music, of I course. I noticed, in fact, that you've given one track, um, a rather Irish flavour. You involved the group Plankstay. Yes. Now, again, th- that goes back a bit to your your own family traditions doesn't it? Yes very much so because my mother is Irish and um, when I was very little the music in the house was very often Irish traditional music and I think I've always loved it. So you're brought up on the Buran and the fiddles and uh, the pipes and all the rest yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely. So what have you done with this particular track? And a little well, later well, on, uh, there they are, I'd like I to play one of my favourites and I think we were talking about him yesterday, John Dunn. <laughs> Now, let's have a look at some schedules. We were talking about Radio 2 earlier on, coming up to its 50th. And, uh, well, let's have a look. I've got some Radio Timeses here. Uh, This is Monday, 9th of October, 1967. Breakfast special with John Dunn. 8.32, and this will be the breakfast show, as Radio 1, presented by Don Moss. Oh, really? Mm. Yeah. Uh, 5 to 10, Think on These Things with Paul Barber. And then at 10 o'clock, it's Jimmy Young. Morning Story at 11, The Dales at 11.15, Melody on the Move, 11.31. This is October 1967, remember. Jimmy Hanley presents music played by the orchestra, led by David Adams. And, of course, this is very early days Radio 2, so this is Radio 2 been on the air as an entity of itself just literally a few months, so there were still some light programme shows on. Simon D at midday, followed by Grand Hotel, Reginald Leopold and the Palm Court Orchestra. And then a listen to the band. And this is like a weekday, Monday afternoon. Listen to the band at 13.31. That's 1.31. OK, what else here? we got... This is September 1967, Radio Times. Have a guess who you think did the breakfast show in 1977. It wasn't Terry. It wasn't oh, Terry. 77. Was it Derek Jameson? No, oh, good guess. That's a good guess. Uh, it's too early for Ken Bruce because he was in the 80s. 77? No, no idea. Ray Moore. Oh, Ray Moore. I was thinking about Ray Moore the other day. What a voice. Yeah, great, great broadcaster. Pete yeah. Murray's Open House. Ding, ding, ding. I love Pete Murray's Open House. I love Pete Murray. Jimmy Young, then it's David Hamilton, then Wagoner's Walk, then John Dunn. Now, John had an afternoon show in the early 1970s and from 1976 was in charge of Radio 2's Drive Time Show for 22 years. Uh, John Dunn, probably this from 1978, uh, given the subject of Radio 2 not being on long wave anymore. Have a listen. Thursday on Radio 2. John Dunn. Oh, that's fame. again good afternoon to you well now does it feel any different to be on these medium ways rather than on the comfortable old long ones no it doesn't however should there be any of you who haven't been with us before may i just say this is a going home program it's a supper cooking program a program of lots of music and as wide a variety of talking points as possible anything but hard news and politics and you're very welcome Oh, thank you, John. And also, Mystery Voice yeah, was mentioning yesterday. Oh, fabulous show. And with a track like that, it's like Strictly. Oh, You're going to be know. dancing around the kitchen. Absolutely. He's brilliant. Amazing. Then we've got Ed Stewart, of course. He was the mid-afternoon guy from 1993 to 1999, remembered by lots of listeners for his accumulator quiz. And this is him from 1993. Did a lot of outside broadcasts over the years. And this is from his show from the Falkland Islands as part of RAF Day. It's all for you. Radio 2 
And this is Ed Stewart wishing you all a very good afternoon from the middle of the South Atlantic, the Falkland Islands. Part of Radio 2's help for the celebrations for the RAF 75th anniversary. And I'm in the furthest south, I think, 8,000 miles. And here I am at the brand new base. When I say brand new, it certainly wasn't here when I was last here 11 years ago. Mount Pleasant. Well, you have to start from these days if you visit the Falklands. The old strip at Stanley is now only used for local light aircraft. This new 8,000-foot runway at Mount Pleasant is part of a complete new military town with its own power, water, stores, maintenance and accommodation for all the service people. And it's where we're staying, too, at the moment. Brilliant, Ed. Nice little room in the office as More old-time Radio 2 tomorrow. Well, Radio 2 is 50 tomorrow, as if you didn't know, when it'll be exactly 50 years since its launch on the 30th of September 1967. Now, on this show, we've been remembering some of the presenters, shows and features that have been on Radio 2 over the past five decades. Yesterday, we looked back on some of the old afternoon shows that were on in the week, but today it's about the weekend, so they did Afternoons the Weekend. Number one by the Del Hatch Band, Sport on Two. Ran from 1970 to 1990, presented by... Des Lynham, Jim Rosenthal and John Inverdale, amongst others. Uh, with John Motch, John Motch in charge of football roundup. Now, it's Grand National Day on the 9th of April 1988, plus Wimbledon are playing Luton Town in the FA Cup semi-final. Mike Ingham has got a special guest watching the match. It's June Whitfield. Let's listen. Perhaps I shouldn't say this, but you haven't seen them lose since you became the president, have you? Is that right? I don't think you should say that, Mike, because one of these days it has to happen. But no, so far, every match I have attended since I've been the uh, president of the Sporters Club, we have not lost. We've either drawn or, or won. So I'm just hoping it doesn't go wrong today. And when you sit and watch the game, are you nice and quiet or do you get heated? Uh, depends if I'm working the next day. Careful. If I am, I don't shout because then I lose my voice and that's no good. But today, that's I'm not brilliant, isn't it? Tomorrow, so what else we got there? Well, we've got a clip from the final ever Sport on Two. This is John Inverdale explaining why the programme's ending on Radio Two. Now, it wasn't quite 20 years ago today that Sport on Two came out to play, but it was almost April the fourth, 1970. Sport on Two came into the world, but we must stress that today is not the beginning of the end. It's more the end of the beginning. Radio Five arrives on Monday. We become Sport on Five next Saturday. And from Sport on Two to Pick of the Pops, nice link. which moved to Radio Two on April the fifth, nineteen ninety-seven, with Alan Fluff Freeman. Now Fluff retired from Pick of the Pops in two thousand. Since then, of course, it's been presented by the likes of Dale Winton, Tony Blackburn, Mark Goodyear, and now Gambo, of course, all produced by our friend Phil Swerm. From Saturday, July the fourth, nineteen ninety-eight, here's Fluff counting down the charts of nineteen seventy-six with producer Phil trying to put him off. This is Fluff as you want to remember it. <laughs> And the top ten recap, weekending the 10th of July, 1976. Number ten, leader of the pack for shangri Number nine, don't go breaking my heart off from John and Kiki D. At number eight tonight, the ninth, you bet you, Rod Stewart. Number seven, a little bit of wait villain. At number six, kiss and say goodbye from the Manhattans. And at number five, let's stick together. <laughs> Was supplied by Brian Ferry. Number four, you just might see me cry. Our oh, kid, I just might smash his face in, actually. Number three, the Roussos phenomenon, Demis Roussos. Number two, the hours are on free, Jazzy Staten. And at number one, you to me are everything from the real thing. And that's just about it. Johnny Walker's waiting on 2FM to rock. <laughs> It's the master. That is the master, Fluff Freeman. Absolutely awesome. Tell me about Richard Allenson. Well, Richard Allenson did Saturday afternoons from 2000 until 2005, remembered by many for the big wall of sound, yeah. where listeners rang in and got played clips of songs when they got to one they wanted to hear, so they had to yell out loud. Radio 2's Big Wall of Sound, sound. with Richard Allenson. If we make it until six o'clock. Hello, Pat. Hello, Richard. How are you? She's pat down in Exeter. I'm fine. The mouth's not working, but everything else seems to be okay. <laughs> you sound all right to me. Yeah, that's because you want me to play your favourite record. Well, that might be. <laughs> Whatever that is. What's happening in Exeter today, then? Well, I've just been shopping, and now I've got to do the housework, and then I've got to start cooking because I've got a dinner party tonight. All right, listen, Pat. Okay. Five minutes to put your feet up. All right. A whole world of music. Excellent. 
Excellent. Will tumble out of your radio. Okay. When you hear the hit you want, you just shout yes, yes, yes. Okay, will do. Try it now. Let's go for it. Okay, shout yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. That's a little bit louder. Yes, yes, yes. I like this. <laughs> big wall of sound. I like that whole idea. I'd forgotten about that. That was absolutely brilliant, Richard Allenson. Uh, doing some bank holiday shows for Radio 2, Chris Evans started doing a Saturday afternoon show right here in September 2005. It was a short stint on weekends because within a year, he'd moved to drive time. Here comes Chris. Seven minutes past three. BBC Radio 2, our last Saturday show ever, it would seem. Ever. Ever. Doing the show next week, Alex Lester. He's very good. Uh, the week after, Paul O'Grady will be here. And then... The permanent host of the new show will take over. The wonderful Stu McConey. Wow. So, we're getting emails off famous people. I don't know if you remember, but a year ago... More in a moment show, from They Did Afternoons on Radio 2. Looking at some of the old days on Radio 2, and I've got Saturday 30th of September. This was the opening day, and I'll just do the mornings for you here. 5.30am news summary and weather forecast. Breakfast special with Paul Hollingdale at 5.33, followed by Leslie Crowther. Then 5 to 10, Paul Simon and Colin Semper. Max Jaffa and Sandy McPherson at 10. This is on a Saturday, obviously. Marching and waltzing. Big show, marching and waltzing at midday. Come, I think that could come back and still work, you know. You could host that, couldn't oh, you, easily? Absolutely. Let's move to Friday 9th of March, talking of you hosting, because at midnight, this is March 2012, what were you doing Friday night at midnight? I'm probably doing the overnight show from midnight till 3, was it? Yeah, Janice is on holiday, so Tim Smith star of afternoons sits in with two hours of classic <laughs> tunes and chat followed by at 2am Sarah Cox ah. and this is 2012 followed by Vanessa Feltz and then properly into the day Chris Evans breakfast show we move to Monday 30th of November 1992 have a guess who was doing the breakfast show November 1992 on Radio 2 Ken Bruce no Derek Jameson no so it wasn't Terry no you won't get it. Give us a clue. Man or woman? It's a man, and the clue is... Uh, we're going to take the next call now. Yes, what is it? Oh, I know it was. It was Brian Hayes. It was Brian yeah, Hayes. Brian did Hayes did while, the breakfast yeah. show for a while. Followed by Ken Bruce and Jimmy Young Glow in the afternoon, then Ed Stewart, then John Dunn. Saturdays, April 1997... That was me doing 10 a.m. slot, followed by the Comedy Hour, the Monk House Archive, Judy Spires in the afternoon. That's a, like a typical Saturday from around 1997. And 1987, who was doing the Breakfast Show 1987? One of the names that you said. Terry Wogan. No, no, it was Ken Bruce in 1987. Uh, wrong again. Oh, no. Did I mean me? Was it Terry Jameson? <laughs> was Terry Jameson. Uh, followed by Ken Bruce, Jimmy Young, David Jacobs. David Jacobs was doing lunch times. Oh, really? Yeah, wow. this was July 1987. Uh, let's play a couple more clips then. Dermot O'Leary joined Radio 2 2004, and his show was originally called The Saturday Club. They did afternoons. Here's Dermot. Thank you, Mama, sisters, sisters, on 88 and 91 Radio 2. Welcome, my friends, to The Saturday Club. <laughs> My name's Dermot O'Leary. I hope you're very well. We are with you from the hours of 2 to 4 on the Saturday. Our mission is a very... And what very about Sundays with Des? Des, yeah. Desmond Carrington presented on Radio 2 over the years. He didn't get his own show, though, until 1981. It was called All Time Greats. It went out on Sunday lunchtime for more than 20 years until 2004. And listen to this. is a great example, right, of Desmond Carrington. It's one of his information-filled links, and it shows his ability, which was fantastic, to smoothly go between different styles of music. <laughs> Albert Chevalier's music hall song knocked him in the old Kent Road. Turned into a sort of old China display cabinet there by the pearly kings of the Ted Heath Band, as it was constituted around 50 years ago. Ted Heath formed his own band on VJ Day, May the 7th, 1945. Brilliant. And although it's now history, it remains the best swing band that Britain ever produced. 
In the 1960s, the Platters formed a bridge I used to love his playlist. I mean, you could hear anything on there, and he was always so knowledgeable and set it all up oh, perfectly. Was fantastic, and such a relaxed style of broadcasting. And the Friday night thing, the music goes round. That yeah, was wonderful. That was good, too. Tell us about Sing Something Simple, then. Do you remember how it went? Da, 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 sing da, 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 Something sing Simple. simple. So Sing Something Simple started on the light programme and continued on Radio 2 until 2001. This theme music will immediately take people back to Sunday afternoons of their childhood, doing the washing in our case. to Sing Something Simple. <laughs> That's great. Cliff Adams' management presentation for BBC Radio 2. The producer was Stella Walters. Is that brilliant? Sing Something Simple, the famous theme which started and ended the show, complete with the show credits announced by our good friend... John Marsh, fantastic. John Marsh, yeah. Saxophonist Benny Green worked for the BBC from 1955 until his death in 1998. I knew Benny Green just a little bit, a bit of hero worship. I absolutely loved him for his knowledge. And now, you know, working with his son is yeah. a treat as well. His long-running Sunday afternoon show was a mix of jazz and songs from the Great American Songbook, plus Benny's great stories. Benny's son Leo, now regularly present shows right here on Radio 2 as I say and uh, this is from a program on Tony Bennett here's Benny Green that moon glow gave me you moon glow sung there by Tony Bennett and a revivalist cowgirl called K.D. Lang the writers were Will Hudson and Eddie Delange, and Delange in particular did well as a songwriter, Darn That Dream and Solitude, among others. One of the songs that Tony Bennett sings in this new album raises some very unexpected ghosts. My discovery of duplication only came about because I was doing this programme. Years ago, I got hold of an album of Eddie Cantor soundtracks, including a picture called Kid Millions. One track appealed to me because it seemed to be so typical of Hollywood. So perfect. It, it just didn't get any better than and Benny Green, uh, another consummate broadcaster. We're looking at afternoon shows in They Did Afternoons. <laughs> 